gracious. You're getting up there, Jarrett. I'm not going to say. I know. All right, I'll so tell you what, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Well, let, what was your reaction last night? Because I think that you went into this draft like some of us, thinking, "Wow, you know, if B. John Robinson's on the board at number nine. That would be a lot of fun." The Falcons yeah, it, took him off the board at eight, so they didn't have that dilemma. The Bears traded down to ten. They don't take Jalen Carter. How did you interpret what the Bears did, and what did you think of it? Well, well, first, when you and I were texting the other day, the B. John Robinson stuff. I'll be honest with you. I would. I just wanted to get a feel of the room from from Bears fans just to see, just because, you know, when you're sitting at nine and you looked at a lot of the names that were going to be could be available, it was very interesting. And I think it was, you know, as we we're leading into the draft, we were trying to figure out, you know, which direction is Ryan Poles going to go. He always finds a way to either, you know, have something up his sleeve, and he showed us that last night, moving back to to ten and trading with Philly. Um, yeah, I just never thought it. that was one of those luxury picks. Like if you got him and I watched Bijan and I was like, this dude is legit, but what the bears need. And I think the more pressing needs were more in my face a little bit more with your defensive line and your offensive line. And so for me, I always talk about when it comes to winning championships, really good football teams, uh, if you can't win the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, you're not in that conversation of going to wherever the Super Bowl is being held at the end of the year. So, I mean, that that's what you, you got to do. So I knew that there was a possibility that Jalen Carter stuff, but to know that they were like, yeah, Philly come up. I mean, Philly's a good spot for him. I just didn't know, Paul, if, 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 Brian Poles and Ian Cunningham and these guys did their homework. On, I was saying that there's no way they could pass him up if, he, if he's there at nine. There's no way they can pass him up. And they did. And there has to be something. I mean, there just has to be something within a, within their organization of how they structure things and their board and, and that maybe character is more of in the forefront than it is about your play on the football field. And so I think it's a, it was going to probably be a gamble. And I said that in a tweet, you know, after his pro day, it was, it was very shocking to me because this young man was going through a lot and I know he's going through a lot. Um, But to, to not be able to show up on, on your biggest job interview of your life and be ready. I knew that there was something wrong. So to me, it was more about him getting his life right than about playing football. And so maybe, you know, the Bears just thought that they didn't have the, maybe the infrastructure to be able to help him the way that he needed help moving forward, and they moved on. So I was, I was excited. I'm actually looking at my notes because three days ago, the only person that I actually sat and watched the most tape on three days ago was Donnell Wright. And I, I'm looking at all the, no, the notes that I wrote down and, and the links to his videos and the first link is the Tennessee versus Alabama game. And that's the one that when you put it on going up against Will Anderson and SEC talent, when you see those big games and you look at them, this young man held his own and he played well. He made, he, he made Will Anderson look non-existent in that game. And to me, that's saying something for a guy that you're going to hopefully get into your organization and plug and pull and he's going to play. Yeah, I, there's a lot there. I I think Jared that with um, with with Jalen Carter, if you don't feel like you will have the as you say infrastructure, if you don't feel like you're going to be able to get the best out of him, if your locker room isn't uh, is isn't progressed enough to absorb some of his issues, whatever it might be, clearly Philadelphia is in a completely different situation and can give him a lot more than you can to the point where they were willing to to give up a fourth round pick next year. Now that's likely a pick at the end of the draft. And we know that a, a next year's fourth is worth uh, this year's fifth and all that stuff. But the bottom line is they knew that they could handle him where the bears obviously didn't feel they could. And that's a good thing not to take a guy. If you feel like you're not in the position to be able to do what he needs. And I like that they doubled down and not only got the receiver, got the tackle out of uh, out of that number one overall draft pick when when all is said and done. And there'll be more on the way. But it, it's uh, it's not a bad thing to understand what your limitations are or what your strengths are or whatever it might be. I don't think 
there's anything wrong with them making that decision. But clearly, that was the spot in the draft where that player was going to go. And people are saying a lot of people you know, passed over him, but nobody else traded out of the spot where it was his turn, right? Yeah, Molly, it's 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 crazy to think about. I'm, I'm sitting there last night at work, and all these picks are going. I'm like, holy cow, he's gonna he, right. he's gonna be he's gonna be right there. Like, what are they gonna do? And we know, especially in what Matt Eberflus likes to do with his defense, that Jalen Carter would have been a, a great pick when if mine, all mine, body and soul was here in Chicago, ready to play. I mean, he's a he, he's a difference maker. And I think that's what we're going to be looking at from from here on out, right? It's like when when you figure out which quarterbacks you're going to take, you know, and you, you, you know, number one and number two, and then they're kind of linked together. I think, you know, watching, you know, the nine and 10 pick with Carter and Wright, we're going to be watching. It's a little bit different on the offensive side when you have an offensive lineman, but if Jalen Carter becomes a stud, I mean, we're all going to be kind of, kind of talking about that. But I do think Philly has the – not only kind of the locker room, but they also have the veteran presence as well to right. be able to help him out. And so I think that to me is what's most important, but also as well to see that Ryan Pohl said, yo, we're going with the offensive lineman that we believe. And I've always said this. If, if I was the GM and I was picking running backs, I hope Chicago would be like, yo, he's going to pick the right running back because he, he's played the position before. The fact that, when Ryan Poles got the job and Ian Cunningham, both guys with that experience of, of that position, you know, I'm trusting them to know what they like in their offensive linemen to be able to, to, to move forward and, and create something special, and especially doing it in the draft. And so to see uh, Darnell Wright and what he's all about and watching his film, I love, I love, he, he fits what I was hoping for. Um, I know a lot of Bears fans, I was just washing my car this morning and I'm sitting there getting the bugs off the front, and this guy just out of the blue comes and scares me. And I don't like to be scared, you guys, right? So I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the bugs off, and this dude comes up to me. He's like, so what do you think about the pick last night? I was like, what? back off of me a little bit, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, but we ended up talking, and he, I said to him, it, you know, it's never the sexy pick to go get your offensive lineman. And he stopped me in mid-sentence. He goes, I don't care about that. It's about protecting Justin Fields. And the fact that Ryan Poles went that way to be able to put more bodyguards around Justin Fields is saying something of what he's trying to build and hopefully get the best out of Justin in year three. So, Jared, today at lunch when somebody surprises you from behind and says, hey, <laughs> hey, JP, what are they going to do at 53, 61, and 64? Uh, what do you think the Bears' priorities should be tonight? And – do you have any sleepers, any guys that you specifically are looking for? And I'm wondering if you like the Miami cornerback, Tyreek Stevenson. Yes, I do like him a lot. Uh, I was I was going to tell you um, another story because I got a, a weird direct message last night from Mario Cristobal, head coach at Miami. But uh, I'm going to go. Let's go back first. The other, I think defense is. I mean, you you got a lot of holes and a lot of a lot of needs, you guys, right? Where it comes down to. Your, your defensive line, a pass, you need a guy to get after the quarterback. Um, I've seen a lot of those mock drafts, and I'm hopefully I'm going to say it right because I said it last night on air at a Tamawa at a barre from, from Northwestern. I've seen his name and with that first picket that they have in the second round. So there's, there's, I think there's so much. You need another corner too. And that's why, that's why this is this is not a quick fix. And I said this after before last year that this was a, a three year process. This draft, the next draft, and then this team I think is going to be hopefully set up for the future to be able to do what they need to. Um, but this is going to be a slow process. And with Ryan Poles, I, I believe we're, we're going to see something moving around here. You still got a lot of picks left, and I, I look forward to seeing what he does to be able to keep adding to this roster that does have a lot of holes. Um, maybe, I know people might think I'm crazy, but if I was a GM, I'd be drafting quarterbacks every single year at some point. Like, at some point in the draft. I know you already have your quarterback. I'm not saying it's uh, Justin. It's about doing it the way that, like, the Patriots did, even when they had Tom Brady. Getting these quarterbacks that fit your system and then hopefully at some point be able to flip them if you can. Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But also, too, um, if you didn't get John Robinson, I'm thinking 
Is there a possibility maybe to get a kid like Chase Brown later in the draft as well, bring him to Chicago? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I'm just, I'm just, there, there, there was not a running back taken in the first round last year, and we had two in the top 12. Now, now that, I, you know, they're, they're special players, and obviously B. John Robinson can do everything, and, and Gibbs is a speed guy. But it is extraordinary how the running back position is forgotten in the modern NFL, and, and you see two go in the top 12, and, you know, you're talking about, uh, the kid from Illinois, that, that would be a great pick for them on, on day Molly, three. Yeah, Molly, 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 I got a question for you and Hawk because people have been posing this to me. Where would my dad go this right. day and age? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A, a, a kid from a small town Jack, from Jackson, Mississippi, Jackson State. It's just it's crazy to think about how devalued the position is. Yes. But still, but, it is such – it's still a big it's still a big position, but I get it and understand that you could take guys later – in these drafts. I mean, as good as John is, I mean, I was saying the same thing about yeah. Saquon Barkley. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just hard to say you're going to, unless you're a big time, big, huge guy like Derrick Henry and everything is centered around you. Um, you, you can go find that value later in, in rounds to fit, find a guy that fits your system and hopefully not have to, you know, pay that big money for these running backs. I'd say late teens. No, Probably. I think he could go in the top ten. I, I think when you're talking about a generational talent, and and I get it. Small school though, small, small school, college. I that's understand. what people would hold against him. Yeah. He'd be over analyzed and over right. but, over inspected, and it would not go well. But I think that but eventually that was like, he was like two number one draft. He was right. like drafting a guy, and then you know seven years later drafting another. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I think I I think he'd go in the top ten. He was just too no. good. I, I I said the exact same thing, but who knows in this day and age, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. that's that's what you're hoping for. But I I'll tell you this: I've I've been everything that Ryan Poles has done uh, so far this off season leading up to this draft. It's been, you guys know, it's just it just it feels different. It feels different to me of watching and covering this team, being a fan of this team. I'm excited. I don't think I've ever been this excited of like what the future could hold for this organization. And I think we're headed in the right direction when we look at it, it's just going to take time. And I think that's the hardest thing for bears fans is, is taking time. I think in sports in general, right. Where everybody wants a quick fix and that's not how it happens to, to be able to have that sustained success. It's going to take time and you're not always going to hit all on the right guys. But if you're if you're doing it the right way, your scouts are doing it the right way, you can find a way to be successful. And I think the NFC North is going to be in that position where the Bears are going to be able to to take it over. They just got to keep putting the right pieces together. Jared, last thing, though, let me ask you this. Is that excitement because of Ryan Poles or is that excitement because of Justin Fields? I, I think it's a combination of both. I mean, I've always been a huge Justin believer. I've I, I've said that from the beginning, like, I've always been very conscious of like, do I post stuff on Twitter? Like I'm all in on Justin. There's no, I got no issues, nothing at all. I think he is the guy. It's just about putting those, the right pieces around him. And the fact that, that polls, I feel like feels the exact same way that he's showing. He showed it last night with going to get Darnell right. That he believes that he, you got DJ Moore now. I mean, you got, you're yeah. adding pieces around him for him to be successful. And if you got to be all in, if you're going to get the best out of a young man. And I think that was the hardest thing last year, not having the first round pick. And then, you know, Bears fans seeing two defensive players going, you're like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? Uh, I think the the trajectory is changing a little bit. Justin has, has all the talents that you need to be successful. He's got things that he's got to get better at, but I've been around a lot of guys and just watching him at Ohio state. The thing was, is, when he had studs around him, it made his job a lot easier. And I think if you start building that here, it's only going to get him more confidence, the guys around him more confidence. And I think that's when we're going to start seeing him take that next step that we're all hoping to be able to see him take. Thanks a ton, Jared. Great stuff. Really appreciate your Thanks, time. Thanks, Jared. All right. Love you guys, man. Talk to you soon.